me today. <laughs> today I have an outrageously large and ridiculous project. I'm not usually the one who does the big crazy projects. I'm usually like the thrift store painting and dollar store makeover kind of person, but today I'm going a little wild. Quick backstory. I started playing around with these little claw apps where you've got access to a virtual claw machine and if you get the prize then you win it and they ship it to you and I thought that this would be a cool thing to do in a video because once it ships to me then I could paint on it or like customize it in some way and that would be kind of fun. It turns out I'm really freaking bad at those stupid claw machine apps. I could not seem to win a prize. I tried two different apps. I spent ten dollars on each one and received nothing. I won nothing. Nothing. I don't know why it was so difficult, but it was very difficult. I hated it. I hated it. And I said, no, I'm not doing this. But then I was really sad because I was really attached to this idea of painting stuff out of a claw machine. Like that just seemed so fun. But the apps were just becoming a big waste of money. So I thought, why don't I just buy a claw machine? <laughs> yeah, that makes total sense. I was fueled by fury over $20 to the point where I'm willing to spend way more. I now own a claw machine. It's a full-size, real working claw machine. We're gonna get some content out of this thing. We are going to make this thing worthwhile. The plan is to eventually make a video winning stuff out of the claw machine and painting on the things that I win. Of course, I now have to buy all the prizes too. This is getting very expensive. So I get this claw machine in. I notice right off the bat that it's ugly. It's, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I mean, I'm sure it's fine. I'm sure it's fine. It's a very nice machine. I like cutesy, colorful things in this design that's on the claw machine. It's not my style. It's very generic. It's just kind of, I'm not very excited by this design. And this is a very large piece of item. <laughs> It's a very large item that takes up a lot of visual space. So I'm thinking the first thing I need to do before I actually use it, I am going to redo this whole machine. I don't know how difficult this is gonna be. Um, I do know that this is definitely gonna be a two part video. This is a huge project and there's no way I'm gonna be able to finish this in a week because this is gonna be a lot of work. So let's get into taking a closer look at this thing and trying to figure out exactly how I'm going to customize it. Okay, so here's my baby claw machine. It's not a baby, it's a big boy. And the design on it is actually not terrible. I may have exaggerated a little bit. It's really not that bad. I'm just not a huge fan of this demonic monkey that's repeated all over it. It kind of looks like he is the prize that's being won, but I can't say I'd be too excited to welcome this into my home. He may want to eat my face. These little critters on on the side are better. And at least I don't think they have any evil intentions. But still, they're very generic looking. Although catching my eye right now, the little green eyed chap, he's kind of cute. It is the same designs repeated on each side, which lacks a little creativity. Uh, here's my little joystick controlly thing. Look, we're moving. Press the button. Oh, it's happening. It's happening so fast. Oh, oh my gosh. No, no way. way. For the first time, I won a prize in a claw machine. And all I had to do was buy the the whole thing. Let me see my prize. Oh, ew. It's only got one ear. We couldn't even spring for the two-eared monkey. No, it's it's gonna be a one-eared monkey. Okay, well, eventually I'll have better prizes in here. While I'm at it, let's just get in here and check out the rest of the prizes. All of these are just ones that came with the machine. Who's this? Ew. Somehow she's way scarier than the demonic monkey. She's gonna eat your face off and do it with a smile. Ew. Whose legs are here? Another disappointing monkey. Woo! We got quite a few of these bug-eyed clownfish. Nemo, what happened? <laughs> Hideous out. But oh wait, who is this? <gasps> Are my standards lowering or is this kind of cute? I it. I'm gonna keep this one for memories. Oh wait, I found the bear version. Oh, you can stay. Now for the rest of you, little scruffy. Don't want you, don't need you. See ya. I'll hold on to these just in case at some point there's an occasion to give them away, but none of them are really worth taking the time to customize. Now, as far as the actual machine, we have the front of the machine, the two large side panels. Those are big. The three small top panels and the massive back panel inside of the machine. 
mean I'm overwhelmed already. already. Uh, I think it's time we get started. I'm gonna start with the bottom half of the machine. I do wanna keep all the black trim. I'm gonna go ahead and tape all of that up to keep my lines clean. At this point, I realize that the design on the machine is actually a giant sticker. So I'm just gonna go ahead and remove it to get a better surface to paint on. Bye bye, basic critters. This is what I ended up with, a nice blank panel. For the front, I did have to get Jordan to help me remove the buttons, knobs, and panels because tools. I can't with tools. I could try, but someone might lose an eye or an ear. Starting over here, that's my face, currently living with it. I decided to try to sand it to get a better surface for painting. I thought that super fine sandpaper was gonna be the way to go, then I realized it really was not doing anything. So I used some ultra coarse sandpaper and we're just gonna really just <laughs> I mean, I guess it's fine. It's not fine, it's coarse. Fine or coarse, yeah. No, this is what I want, I think. Not really sure. I'm gonna move on to the gesso. And look at this, I actually bought an appropriately sized paintbrush. I cannot tell you how many people were absolutely devastated, upset, at the size of the paintbrush I used for my giant mural. Yeah, it was a little small. I actually just really preferred using that size brush just to avoid all the emotional breakdowns in the comment sections. I got a bigger brush for this. This is basically just like an acrylic primer. I think it helps the paint to stick, so I've been told. Then, of course, I have to sand and gesso the other panels as well. And the whole time I'm wondering, when can I start painting? When can I start painting? Patience, my little friend. Finally, yes, the whole bottom half of the machine is prepped and ready for paint. I do need to figure out what I'm going to paint before I start painting it. I do have this machine in my art room currently. It will eventually end up in the other part of our basement. We have a big couch, games, movie posters, also giant pickle lives in there. And I guess it's kind of like a galaxy theme. Well, kind of. I mean, there's there's this. Plus this black spotted rug, which I really like. Can we do something with that? So I ended up using my iPad to try to map out a color scheme. I did decide to go with the galaxy theme since, you know, this. I wanted to bring in some little characters. So I started sketching in some aliens, but these aliens are not not it. No, like he this. So I started a new spread. I'm trying to think outside of the box a little bit. We always see aliens like this and like this or even, yeah, like that. Who came up with this idea of what an alien looks like? Nobody's ever seen one. For my aliens, I decided to give them these little bean bodies and then add different elements to them to create completely unique creatures. Do they look kind of like the blobs? Yeah. But they are not, okay? They're bean body aliens. They're not the blobs. And at this point, I started trying some different colors on them to really go wild. This one's some sort of striped dinosaur with an eye problem. And you see how I brought in those black dots? This is about the rug. Moving right along, this one's a baby. We got a monkey tail, cat ears, plus that little stereotypical alien doohickey on his head. Next, we got, okay, this one's definitely a bunny. <laughs> I kind of wanted to create characters that didn't too strongly resemble an earthly animal, but I kind of let this one slide because I really liked it. That fuzzy coat thing, mmm, she's got style. Then there's this one, which is kind of like a butterfly with bare ears. This one is just a little bit basic. That's okay. Then, ooh, this hyper little girl. She's kind of like the alien woodland creature. She's got antlers and a skunk tail. Finally, this one has to be my least favorite. You weren't expecting that, were you? Clearly a dog with a unicorn horn. Ugh. I tried changing the ears to make it a little less dog-like. I decided to leave it like this for now. I may or may not change it later. I will. All right, here are all six of them. Woo! Honestly, I'm obsessed. I do feel like I need to name them. I don't want to be saying like, oh, now I'm painting the little baby cat eared monkey tail bean alien. Let's just give them names. First, Tom. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why that's funny. Next, let me come up with something more alien-ish. Zuzu. Zuzu. Then there's Tutu. Hey, that kind of works actually because the fur is like a neck tutu. And then it's Mika. There's Dot C and Boops. 
not poops, boops. I printed out the sketches of my aliens for reference, and here's some paint. I'm starting with a nice white base for each of my colors. Then I'm adding matte medium, just a splash to help my paint go a little further, and also thin it out a little bit. And I finally come to the color. Oh yes, luscious, luscious color. I've got a nice pink, a beautiful purple. Wow, look at that. Uh, blue, and you know some other guys. They're all they're all here. And here is my color scheme. It's not rainbow. There's no yellow. Just putting that out there. I'm using my character drawings as a guide and then doing a nice sketch. And here is the paint. Goodness gracious. Finally. I'm going to start painting down here with Mika and Tutu. <laughs> Oh my gosh, these names. Here's a very unsatisfying shot of me painting with white. Oh, this is not at all what I hoped it would be. And laying down the color for Tutu. Gosh, am I gonna get used to these names? Very glad I did a white base coat on this because even with that, I still needed several coats of color. Moving up to Boops, who is clearly holding on to this planet. This is either a very small planet or a very massive Boop. And oh, here we are. That is more satisfying. Yeah. Yes, that's more like it. I'm doing this whole space thing, okay? So I went for a nice deep galaxy blue for the background. And look at that, I've already reverted to my tiny brush. <laughs> I'm sorry, okay? Do I need to apologize for the size of the brush I use? Uh, no. But I actually am sorry about my face's existence in and out of the frame. I just don't have like a go-to camera setup for this. This was the best result that I could manage, okay? I struggled to get here. And speaking of struggle, things are starting to get chaotic around here, but the base layer of the painting is just about done. You may be wondering why did I take the trouble of designing six very detailed characters to just use three of them. Where Tom at? Don't worry about Tom. Okay, Tom is not dead. And there will be plenty of opportunities on other parts of the machine to bring them all together. This is a big machine. This is just one part of it. Painting in the basic shapes was like, okay, whatever, cool, this seems pretty easy. But after a couple hours, I'm like, oh, wait, wait, this kind of sucks. What am I doing here? Oh, nothing, just making a giant mess. My back started hurting from hunching over on the floor and the angle I was having to work at was getting really uncomfortable. Here I am with that realization, pain creeping in. That's okay, we're fine. I switched to working on the background um, just to do something easier for a second, whipping up a nice little galaxy. I've done this so many times before, so. Oh, and that paint is dripping. It's dripping! No, tried to save it, but kind of made a mess of it, so I'll have to deal with that situation later. Now, with the background well in hand, somewhat, I'm gonna go back to the characters. The thing that made this very frustrating frustrating was that I just kept making mistakes. The angle that I had to hold my hand was very awkward. Look at that. And I just did not have very good control. So my lines kept getting really wobbly or just being completely off. Normally I can outline a little better than that. So then I would just have to go back and constantly fix things. I'm completely aware that my head is getting in the way. And with each mistake I went to go fix, I made another mistake that then needed to be fixed. Oh, those eyes. I'm drowning here. I'm drowning. So trust me when I say this was a struggle. And oh, wait, shoot. Tutu, I did you wrong here. Tutu is supposed to have two different colored ears. So that needs to be fixed. Tutu's ears pink. That is not okay. Finally, ha, yes. Now we are getting somewhere with this. The original design of Tutu does not include eyebrows. So I thought I'd add some, but no. I, I see why I went with no eyebrows. As I'm waiting for this layer of paint to dry, before doing the last little tweaks, I'm gonna move up to boop. Is it boop or boops? Boop or boops? Boops, it's boops. You may notice the design has changed a little bit from the original sketch. I actually flipped the white and blue areas on him and traded the unicorn horn for a set of horns, starting to fill in some details of his mini planet. And then just like that, wham, it's done. Speaking of planets, let's talk about what planet all of these bean body aliens are from. And well, the answer is simple. They all come from none other than the planet 
plant Nophilophagus. What? Do you know it? If you weren't here for the creation of Nophilophagus, I'm giving you the side eye. No, it's okay. I'll link it below in case you want to see it, but basically, I kind of accidentally created this very strange looking scenery in one of my videos, and I named it Nophilophagus. And so, this is the return to Nophilophagus, where we meet some of the interesting inhabitants. Now, this planet that Boops is holding on to, that's not Nophilophagus. I don't think they would all fit. This is a mini planet that he has stumbled upon as they are currently on some space travels, I guess. It's sure. <laughs> Oh, so that's me laying on the floor. I was talking about Nophilophagus, not your persisting back pain, but okay, sure, we can change the topic. While I'm here, yes, I was experiencing back pain. <laughs> my clothes are a mess. These were my favorite leggings. I'm sweating. Oh, the pain. But I have still one last step to complete this panel, which is removing all the tape from the trim. Oh, I lied. This is the last step. Applying a nice clear coat over the top. Finally, this panel is done. Woo! Ooh, one down, only one, two, three, four, five, six more to go. Oh my gosh. Well, to be fair, this is one of the bigger panels. I am really happy with this, although keep in mind, this is really just a part of the bigger piece. Now, I definitely thought I would get a lot further than this for part one of this video. <laughs> that being said, this is a very large painting, one of the biggest paintings that I've ever done. This was just so challenging to paint this way. This was really the best I could do without driving my myself absolutely crazy. Also, this video included all the prep work, ideation, paint mixing, and other important parts of the process. So next week, I'll just be jumping straight into the painting. I hope you guys enjoyed watching. Thank you so much. And don't forget to come back next week to see how I continue to customize this claw machine. Bye! <laughs>